In the world of smartphones, there's something of a long-standing tradition to add the name Pro to a phone name to make sure you know it's a bit more special than the regular model. It rarely ever means it's a phone for professionals. So when Sony launched the Xperia Pro I in 2021, it was refreshing to see that Pro in this instance meant lots of Pro level controls. But how does it compare to the big flagship Pro model iPhone, apart from being more expensive? I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocketlint, and if you're wondering that exact question or whether you should buy one or the other, I'll hopefully help you in this video. And while you're here, if you do like it, please hit like, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more of our videos. When it comes to design, the two use similar materials, but executed in different ways. That means while both have metal frames and frosted matte glass on the back, the difference in size makes a considerable difference to how they feel when you hold them iPhone's much wider frame means it's not exactly easy to use one-handed, but does give you that big expansive screen, which we'll get more into later. Sony's, while taller, is narrow and feels more comfortable to use in a single hand. What's more, the ridged pattern on the metal gives it a completely different texture to the shiny polished steel on the iPhone. That polished look gives you a more luxurious finish, one that catches light and reflects it back at you. As we noted in the Xperia review, Sony likes to go about things a bit differently to the mainstream. So where things like buttons and ports are kept to a bare minimum on the iPhone, Sony has tried to give us everything we could need. That means specifically there's a 3.5mm port for wired audio, a physical fingerprint sensor and a camera shutter button, as well as a customizable shortcut key. You even get a micro SD card slot in the SIM card tray if you want to expand the internal storage further. You can pull it out with your fingers, no paperclip required. Both are water resistant to high levels, both offering IP68 resistance. Now moving on to displays, and as with many of its recent Xperia phones, Sony went with an unusual but trademark 21 by 9 ratio cinematic display on the Pro-i, and it's 4K. It measures 6.5 inches diagonally versus 6.7 inches on the iPhone, but because the iPhone has a wider aspect ratio, you do get that sense of having much more screen to play with on the iPhone immersing you in your content. For most videos on Disney+, Plus, Netflix and Prime, the bigger display on the iPhone makes for a much larger picture, and slimmer black letter and pillar boxing. And there's a noticeable difference in the treatment of light and colour too. The iPhone screen is noticeably brighter most of the time, it's also got a cleaner look to it. Sometimes this approach is preferable, allowing you to see more detail in the shadows and darker portions of the screen, but Sony seems to tune things to be a little softer and warmer, and it does the same with its camera, which we'll show you later. That soft golden light means that videos have that really natural looking light to them, but with the darker screen sometimes means it's not always easy to pick up on the detail in the shadows. Being a pro-focused phone though, Sony gives you a lot of scope for calibration. If you want to, you can really fine-tune the balance of colours to get the white balance exactly how you want it to be. Plus, there's a creator mode. This preset profile with support for 10-bit colour in HDR and has Sony's professional warm look. Whichever of the approaches to colour temperature you prefer, there's a real advantage in having the iPhone's larger screen. As far as processor power goes, there aren't many out there that can compete with the A15 Bionic that's in the iPhone. But in truth, both of these phones feel fast and responsive part down to the 120Hz refresh rates on the display, but also because they both have very powerful processors. You won't be left waiting for apps to load or dealing with any lag or stuttering. Sony's phone does get quite warm under load, particularly when using the camera, and feels warmer to the touch than the iPhone. However, neither gets uncomfortably hot. Both of these phones also offer 120Hz refresh rates on their display, and that means certain areas of the interface will seem really smooth and snappy and retain their sharpness, but there isn't much content out there that is optimised for this frame rate yet, so you won't really see it in your favourite games or any of your favourite movies, not really. The one area where the iPhone really outperforms the Sony is in battery life. They feature similar capacities, but in our experience the iPhone 13 Pro Max goes quite a lot longer. It's not unusual for me to get two days from the iPhone on light to moderate days with about two or three hours of screen time each day. With Sony, that was just never possible, if only because its standby battery life was pretty poor. Even leaving it on the side doing nothing, the battery would drain, leaving us needing to charge it overnight pretty much every night, in order for it to have enough juice to get through the next day. Apple's phone also offers the benefit of wireless charging, where Sony doesn't. So on to the big one, the camera. 
We've already talked about the differences in approach, but it's in the camera department you see it the most vividly. Not only in the way the results come out, but also in how you shoot videos and photos. Apple's approach has always been to design a camera that takes good shots just by tapping the shutter button, for video or photo, and it's the same this year and its processor and computational algorithms do all the heavy lifting, delivering vibrant colours, quite high contrast and smooth frame rates. Sony particularly with video likes to push you to controlling things manually. When you look at the photo side by side for instance with the Sony though, the difference is quite striking. For instance, shooting this portrait, when you look at the colours and the light levels on the jumper, Apple's looks so dark and crushed where Sony's has that natural, vivid look. And the skin looks natural too, without any heavy HDR effects. Sony's particularly good at portraits and has the added benefit of eye and face tracking and autofocus, which works even when there's something like a magnifying glass or some kind of distortion in front of the lens. The difference in photos isn't always obvious though. Taking pictures with the main camera, they can both deliver really good detailed shots with good colour accuracy and natural depth of field. But if there's one thing that I noticed is that the iPhone's processing often led to more of the contrast heavy look and artificial sharpness. Sony definitely gives you more of that classic natural film photography look. It's most noticeable when comparing the blue of the sky. iPhone goes really quite blue. Sony's doesn't at all, and it's mostly the same across all three cameras. Looking at the colour of the stones for instance, iPhones mostly look like varying shades of grey, where the Sony pulls out all the varying browns and greys and other shades, and is a lot more faithful to the actual scene that we took the photo of. iPhone goes clean and cool and a bit harsh on contrast and sharpness, and Sony tends more towards softer and warmer. I almost always preferred the results from the Sony camera personally. And the benefit of Sony's manual system is that if you want to, you can manually adjust the white balance to change that, or even when filming video in its videography app, filming with a preset picture profile that completely changes the look and the feel. The one benefit of iPhone is the extra length you get from the zoom. Its optical equivalent zoom is 3.3 times versus Sony 2 times. However, the 2 times camera, or the 50mm camera as Sony calls it, is actually really good for taking portrait photos. In the end, it's clear that Pro means something entirely different to each company. For Sony, it means giving you Pro level controls in your videography and photography apps, and lots of flexibility to control your output. For Apple, it means giving you a premium finish and high bitrate video and photo, but it still takes care of all the processing and settings for you. We think for most people, the iPhone is going to be the better overall choice, if only because it costs significantly less. Plus the battery life is much better and it has a bigger, brighter display. But there is still a certain appeal with the Sony phone. Based purely on camera results, if there was one phone I wanted to take out with me to take photos and videos, it would be the Sony. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on social media, so get hold of me on Twitter if you want to. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, it helps us a great deal. Tap subscribe and the notification bell, and that way you don't miss any of our uploads. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.